Am I the asshole for not giving up my airline seat to a pregnant woman? I was flying by myself on a five plus hour flight to visit family over the holidays. I specifically booked and paid extra for an aisle seat in the second to last row because I have medical issues that sometimes require quick access to the bathroom. Right before boarding, a woman asked me to give up my seat so she could sit closer to the bathroom. She was pregnant but did not seem distressed. While I felt for her situation, as someone with a medical condition, I did not feel it was fair to demand I move from the seat I planned for and paid for, especially since she apparently had not booked an aisle seat herself in advance. The flight attendants refused to help mediate when she insisted I should have to move. There were also no other aisle or close seats available on the full flight that I or flight crew could facilitate swapping. I tried to recommend she speak to her doctor about needing accommodation if sitting far from the bathroom is not medically advisable for her situation during future flights. Still, my family says I should have inconvenienced myself and given up my seat. I disagree though. I think she and the flight crew were unfairly targeting me instead of handling it through proper channels. Am I the asshole? Get ready with me while I tell you how I was the best woman at my ex's wedding. Let's talk about it. Okay, so first things first is we were never actually like together together. It was one of those very weird like situationships where we didn't want each other to be with anybody else, but we like couldn't fully commit to each other. And there was literally something always in the way, like when we were like almost gonna get together. And he actually dated my best friend first, which was just like a whole entire other story. But yeah, it was just a very like on again, off again relationship and just very toxic for each other. But like we literally could not leave each other alone. And when things like ended between us, we didn't talk for a very long time. And the next time I did see him, I'm at this bar with a friend and like I'm I'm still trying to get over this guy okay and i she's like oh let me introduce you to my friend and when i turn i see this beautiful girl with this like pixie cut blonde hair like she literally looks like a fairy and she has her tongue down this guy's throat and when i look closer i realize that it's my ex and i'm like great i need to get out of here but before i do that i ask her like how long they've been together and when i'm doing the timeline when i'm doing the girl math i'm like oh he got with her like right after things ended between us which yeah we weren't together anymore and a lot of that was on me but i just like I was still struggling to get over him, so I guess it was just like very shocking that he had moved on so fast. And I am very much hoping that he doesn't see me. I'm like trying to be very stealth, very ninja, trying to get out of there. But of course, luck was not on my side and he sees me, he calls me by my nickname and he comes over and we go outside to talk. Talk does not go well at all. I'm basically mean to him. He says some really hurtful and mean things to me and we end up separating and we don't talk for a long time. He tries to call me, I don't answer. And when I finally do answer, he's very apologetic. He's like, I should have never talked to you that way. I just miss you. Like, can we just be friends, please? Like, more than anything, I miss my friend. And we were like best friends, so I'm like, you know what? I I can deal. Like, I felt I feel like I'm finally like starting to get over it. I can deal with like, just being your friend. So we talk here and there, nothing crazy, just like some text messages here and there. It's nothing like how it used to be, but I understand he has a girlfriend, whatever. And then he calls me and hits me with the I'm getting married conversation. My heart dropped to my butt. I thought I wanted I wanted to throw up and cry right there, but I didn't. And he literally asked me to be his best woman like he's like I don't have a best friend like you are my best friend I want you to be a part of this wedding like I want you to be a part of one of the happiest days of my life and I'm literally dying on the inside by obviously I say yes besties that was a mistake so I've never met this girl right and when I finally do meet her she is very much giving me side eye doesn't really want to have anything to do with me and you know what i cannot say that i blame her because if he was my fiance and he had a girl best friend i wouldn't like me either and when we sit down for their rehearsal dinner her entire side of her table is side eyeing me i'm sitting next to his sister and his family who i'm very close with so of course like we're cutting up we're having a good time and her side of the family is glaring at me like they could not make it any more obvious that they do not like me and i'm just feeling like this is so awkward but i just keep telling myself like i'm not here for them i'm here for him like just doing my best and they are like so sickly cute together it's like hard for me to even stomach i'm like they want to get out of here as fast as possible so it comes time during the dinner where they're passing out gifts like all the wedding party is getting a gift and i noticed that he's giving um the groomsmen and stuff these flasks i'm like okay this is not going to be like a very personal item it's going to be fine i'm just going to get a flask too probably i was wrong he gave me it was just kind of like a joking gift but it was very like an inside joke thing and he and i are both like cracking up we are still getting 
like dirty looks and i'm like okay this is awkward i'm gonna go to bed that next night are the bachelor and bachelorette parties and he just wanted to go like camping and she was going out they were leaving for a flight and they're like kissing each other goodbye whatever i can tell she's uncomfortable and her brother who's also part of the groomsman side is just like giving me all these looks side eyeing side eyeing the hell out of me and the things that happened on the bachelor bachelorette party night changed things forever my boyfriend said that I was embarrassing him while giving birth to our baby. I am 20 and my boyfriend is also 20 years old. Me and my boyfriend have been in a relationship for about a year now and we just had a baby boy last week. I had a natural birth and my boyfriend was there throughout the whole process. I screamed a lot during birth. Every single time that I screamed, my boyfriend would whisper in my ear, Can you please stop screaming so loud? You're really embarrassing me. I also threw up a couple times and when I did, I saw him covering his face like in shame, like ugh, disappointed. When I held the midwife's hand for comfort, he whispered to me, can you let go of her? Stop being so embarrassing. And he also said that my birthing position was embarrassing and called me a few vulgar names. Like literally what's going on? I'm honestly so upset with his behavior from that day because that's like when I needed his support the most. And the craziest part is, anytime I ever bring up or try to talk to him about it, he completely denies that he said anything and he said that I'm just being silly. I spoke to my mom about it, but she's like super traditional type and she said that I should try couples therapy first. But I just really don't think that my boyfriend is going to want to go to counseling at all. I don't think he's going to listen to my suggestions. So where do I go from here? Am I the asshole for telling my parents the wrong vacation date so I don't have to take my sister with me? That's funny. No, you're not the asshole. Not at all. My parents have a knack for ruining my vacations and the things I do just to include my little sister in things and it pisses me off. Last year in Texas, I got invited to hang out with my cousin. Not my sister, but she was included in the plans anyways. They also ruined my plans and made me go to Utah to spend time with another cousin who I originally wasn't planning to see, and I only got to spend five days in Texas. I didn't even have a suitcase on that trip. They filled my suitcase with gifts for other people. I wore layers of clothes and stuffed my backpack. This time, I've scheduled a, vac a vacation to Paris for myself. This is a self-funded vacation, and I'm doing it for my first experience on my own. It was supposed to be with an ex, but whatever at this point it's a solo vacation it was planned months ago they've been constantly urging me to take my sister and i've said no now they're trying to include her again i don't hate my sister but i wouldn't want the burden of taking her with me they said they're gonna pay for her but i don't want the emotional burden of having any of them with me they literally drain all the life out of me every day i cook and clean and basically just am a workhorse on top of my nine to five internship once they waited until I was back at 8 p.m. for me to make them dinner. That's fucked up. They waited until 8 o'clock at night for you to come home to cook dinner for them. Three capable fucking adults, your sister, your mom, and your dad. That's disgusting. That's terrible. Baby, how old are you? How old are you? Maybe it's time to save up some money so we can move out and not have to deal with this. Because that's not okay. Nobody wants to go to work just to have to come home and take care of three fully capable, fully functioning goddamn adults who waited until 8 o'clock to eat because their workhorse wasn't around to cook dinner. Nah, baby, this is not okay. You do not deserve this at all. I'm taking a few courses, not easy ones either. Hydraulic engineering and mechanics of materials and thermal this summer. But I'm always expected to just be family oriented. But I literally can't be. They're so draining. I plan this summer out to a T. Even the 20% they want from my paycheck. I've calculated it. I'll give them what they want. So today, they kept badgering me about my vacation. And I told them the wrong date for when it starts. About a week after. I also told them the wrong airport. I felt a little guilty, but honestly, I feel like I made the right move. Absolutely not. You are not the asshole at all. You are entitled to want to go on a vacation by yourself. This is your sister and not your fucking child. You do not have to include her in your plans. You deserve this. You said this was something you planned to do with an ex 
and clearly that's not happening anymore. You need this trip. You need this time to yourself to learn yourself again. And you're 100% entitled to that. You are not the asshole. Your parents, your sister, they are 100% the assholes. Terrible. Absolutely fucking gross. Grown ass people that sit home until late, dark 30 at night for someone else to come home and cook them dinner. Like, absolutely not, baby. You were not wrong. You did everything the right way. Don't slip up. Don't say nothing, don't post nothing, don't talk to it about anybody until you're gone. My question is, is it possible for us to start working on savings so we can move out? Because you are giving them 20% of your paychecks. Every paycheck you're giving 20%, yet you still cook and clean for a house full of grown motherfuckers. Uh, no, 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 no. So is it possible for us to move out? Because that's exactly what you need to do, babe. Like you made the right move for telling them the wrong information that way they can't impose on your vacation but the next move needs to be the fuck out of this house because this is not okay it's not okay if it's possible it's time to look into better housing am i the asshole for calling the police on my niece and not telling my sister beforehand i 24 female have a sister 35 female who has a 16 year old daughter okay mm -hmm. her daughter has started rebelling and being a teenager by being a teenager, I don't mean stealing. I mean being mouthy or thinking she's invincible and she knows better than everyone. But recently she's gotten sticky fingers. Mm. She's been banned from the mall in our neighborhood. She was suspended from school for taking a girl's phone and she's even tried to pawn her mother's wedding ring. I don't like my niece at my house for this reason. I've worked too hard for my things for them to be stolen. Two weeks ago, I noticed the patio door was unlocked and I make sure I lock all my doors before I leave. My fiance suggested we get cameras, so we put cameras in the house. Last week, Wednesday, my fiance and I went to go look at wedding venues, and we were gone all day. When we got back, I only had to unlock the bottom lock to get into the house, so we checked the cameras, and sure enough, my niece and her friend somehow picked the lock to the window, and she was in our house for hours with two guys, and they took some money from my purse. They took two of my fiance's Rolex watches. Oh. They also Ooh. took my grandmother's wedding ring that oh. she left for me when she passed away last year from cancer. They were eating snacks and watching TV, shoes on our table and couch. Just like they lived there, and this is normal. Yep, shoes on the table and couch is crazy. Lock them up. I was fine with everything else until that. Mm. <laughs> Put them under the juvie. <laughs> for real. Under, under the, the juvie. <laughs> I called my sister and told her what happened and told my told her my niece has two days to give me everything back or I'd call the police and she said she would handle it. Thursday comes around, nothing. Friday comes around, nothing. So I called the police and I showed them the video. <laughs> Filed a report. I got a call I got a call later from my sister crying and screaming that I should have told her beforehand. I told her I gave her two days to come up with the stolen items and I heard nothing back and I told her I was going to call the police. She's lucky I gave her grace for two days. My mom called me and said that you don't have kids, so you don't understand. I told her it doesn't matter if I have kids or not. She committed a crime and brought two <laughs> random people in my house. <laughs> my safety is in danger. I don't get the whole, you should have warned me. Warned her for what? So she could hide her? I don't think I did anything wrong. My sister and her husband said they won't be coming to our wedding. And I told them the invitation was revoked when their daughter stole my things. Mm. Mm. I've been getting threats from her husband. I want to block them, but my fiance says keep all the evidence in case something happens. And then there is an edit. It, we do have a security system now. We've changed the locks. We're getting a save for his watches and the more valuable stuff. We are planning on moving by the end of the year and none of my family will know where I live. I don't feel safe knowing two random men know where I live. My fiance also says that we're getting a guard, we're getting a guard dog. We were already talking about getting a dog. No, this isn't just for guarding. We wanted one before, but we were waiting until we moved. Also, by beforehand, my sister meant like the day I called the police. Also, I have not gotten my things back as of yet. Hopefully. She said, I'm calling around to local pawn shops, checking Facebook, Craigslist, all of it. For the people calling me names over calling the police, you're not giving me any other solutions. I did not want to call the police, which is why I gave her two days. I don't think any of you know how unnerving it is to have your home broken into. You don't know how unsafe it feels to walk into your home, scanning if anything is gone, hearing a creak and wondering if they've come back. These two random men she brought know where I live. I should feel safe here, but I feel anything but that. 
If it had been someone else's home, she could have been seriously hurt or dead. Hopefully, this was a wake-up call. If she needed money, she could have asked me, not broke into my home with two men mm. who are still on the streets and who could come back at any moment and do Lord knows what. And then, top comment, not the asshole. Your niece has some serious issues, and she needs to understand actions have consequences. Question, though, so, how uh, did she get into your house? And then OP the said the second time she snuck in through the kitchen window. Update. I came home to talk to Sharon today. I pulled in our driveway and my mother-in-law was sitting there in her car. I got out and walked inside, wanting to avoid talking to mother-in-law. Sharon was sitting at the kitchen table and I joined her. She sat in silence, so I asked the first question. Why does Penny not fit the part? And why don't you want her in the wedding at all? Her answers full-on shocked me. She quietly said, quote, I was hoping that after the wedding, you could become the holiday visit only dad. I didn't want her in the wedding so she wouldn't be in the photos around the house since she wasn't going to be around much. I kept my cool, calmly took her hand, and pulled my engagement ring off. Her eyes started to tear up. She said that we shouldn't end the marriage over this and that she can change. I told her that the damage was already done. I told her that I wanted her things be moved more, out by next problems. week and that she could Wait come and get the them end. when my daughter wasn't home. The house is in my name and I paid for it. I was allowing her to get her furniture that she paid for. She stormed out and mother-in-law came knocking on the door saying I was being unreasonable. I couldn't imagine only seeing my daughter three or four times a year. The fact that Sharon wanted me to give up. Part of my custody blew me away. I'm sitting on my couch just in shock. Our honeymoon was supposed to be in Hawaii. Looks like me and Penny will be going instead. I will update again if anything happens. Relevant comments. How's your son holding up? What has developed between him and Amy? And OP says, he hasn't spoken to Amy yet since finding out the news and I'm not sure he ever will again. And then somebody else says, have you confirmed if the, th if the thong you found was Amy's? The situation is fucked up. And OP said, I confirmed that it wasn't my Sounds daughter's. She said it wasn't hers and I know it wasn't mine. So who else's could it be? And then somebody else said, wait, are you trying to say they had sex in the master bedroom? Undone, and somebody else sis. said, don't cheaters always use their married bed? And then OP said, yes, I believe he did. And then she ends up adding later in the comments, both me and my son are going to get tested and checked out as well. Mm, There's... Crazy. There's no telling how many different women he's been sleeping around with. As for Amy, her mom has been in contact with me, and Amy has been threatening to run away with him because they are in love. Next update. Thank you all again for all the love and encouragement. It gives me comfort. It means so much to me. I've received many comments and messages accusing me of faking the story, which oddly also provides comfort because all of this feels unreal even to me. It validates my own feelings that there are people out there who can't even fathom this being true. I wish it were fake. I've been focusing on and worrying about how others are feeling over this, somewhat ignoring my own feelings, which I'm trying to change. I range from anger to numbness, like a light switch. We're all safe and still at my brother's house. We're very careful, and his house is secured. Paul has tried to call my cell phone several times a day. I'm refusing to interact with him, and I will have my lawyer handle all correspondence. He scares me, frankly. My brother has a very secure house with an alarm system and, a, and deadbolt locks. We feel safe here with him. Both my son and I got checked out and tested. It appears so far that we're both clean based on immediate rapid tests. But in the coming days, we'll know for certain when the lab results come in. I'm not overly concerned. Eric is scheduled to see a therapist early next week, which is good and needed. He's not himself right now. He seems a bit shell-shocked, and I'm concerned. He internalizes a lot, and it's hard to get a read on what's going on in his head. That being said, he's thoughtful, and he's been talking with me, asking me how I'm doing and everything. He's not interested in corresponding with his dad at all. He calls only my cell phone. He has not tried to reach out to either Eric or Mary. I get the sense that Paul is extremely nervous. He's scared. I think he deep down knows that if investigated thoroughly, he would be in big trouble. Mm -hmm. That's what my gut is telling me. I still think about the Zoom call with him, and the more I think about it, the more it looks like he was a man whose entire world was crashing down on him. The panic in his face was very apparent. I offered Mary for me to make an appointment with a therapist as well, but she doesn't want to see one yet. She said she's open to it eventually, but what's time to herself? She's been asking her friends about her dad and if they experienced any creepiness from him. Her friends were open and honest with her, and apparently they felt like he stared a lot and sensed his hovering presence whenever they were over. 
One of Mary's friends went as far to say that she felt like he was checking her out a lot, like looking at her rear and complimenting the color of her yoga pants. Mm. At the time, no issue was brought up about it, but in light of everything that's been happening, it seems strange now. He would sit himself in different areas or vantage points to get a good view of her, she claimed. He also asked questions about what kind of friend group or which clique they were in at school. He kept asking if they were the popular girls. I'm completely embarrassed that they had to experience this at our home. As for updates on Amy, which is the main reason why I wanted to write this update, I completely agree that she is also a victim. A lot of people have been emphasizing that and I agree. I've done everything I could in my own power to indirectly get her opportunities to get help. Like I said, I told her mother and she's been updating me on everything. Amy, unfortunately, is still living in her deluded reality and I can only pray that she'll eventually come to her senses. She doesn't want to see any doctors or therapists at all and has been constantly trying to reach Paul because, again, she believes that they are in love. From what I've been told, she hasn't been able to get a hold of him and he's been avoiding communication with her completely. Amy blames me for that and believes I took away his devices and, and am very controlling. Amy looks at me as a villain and still sees Paul through her rose-colored glasses. Her mother showed her screenshots of his dating apps and profiles and matches and she refuses to believe it, saying that I photoshopped it. According to her mom, Amy keeps saying things like, Every, everyone is just mad because she found herself a real man, and that I'm jealous because she takes better care of him than I do. And it's in line with some of the conversations I screenshot, where a lot of what Paul says is him complaining about things I don't do for him sexually. Right now, she's insistent that she and Paul will be together in the long run. Ugh. He's honestly a slime ball. I can only hope that Amy comes to her senses, but me directly intervening doesn't feel like it would be productive at the moment. Maybe eventually, though. And then some relevant comments. I'm so sorry that this has happened to you. Reading all the previous posts, I honestly get the vibe that your husband wasn't a very good one to begin with. Someday, when you're ready, you're going to find someone who thinks you're glorious as you age. Your son is also going to be okay. He's gotten a lesson on exactly how men shouldn't behave, a painful one, but in time, he's going to realize that Amy was groomed and abused. It sounds like she was vulnerable and your ex took advantage of a child who was in a bad situation. Hopefully, once Amy has had some time to process just how messed up this was, she'll tell the police the whole story. I fully believe something was happening before she turned 18. Am I wrong for telling my parents and my husband that I don't want to name my daughter after the sister I never knew? Ooh, it's baby name drama. My parents had a daughter before me, Summer. She was born with cancer and died when she was only five weeks old. I was born two years later and her memory was very strong throughout my life. My parents weren't great parents to me because they were still in very heavy grief and it made our relationship complicated. I remember they cried on her birthday every year and they also cried on most of mine and she was mentioned at every celebration. I remember for a while really wanting to hear more about her but at some point all the mentions of her were too much. It felt suffocating and I felt less important. When they'd meet new people, Summer was the child they mentioned first and the one they talked most about. Someone would ask what grade I was in or how old I was and they'd say Summer would be in 4th grade or Summer would have been 13 today. When I graduated high school, I asked that my parents not to mention Summer during the celebration. When I graduated high school, I asked that my parents not mention Summer during my celebration and they were so angry at me for wanting Summer forgotten. I took some time from them in college but was racked with guilt and we ended up back in touch. I got married to my husband, Kale, last year and now we're expecting a baby girl. My parents brought up how amazing it would be for us to name our daughter Summer and my husband was 100% on board. He was pretty much agreeing before I had a chance to react. When I did talk to him, he was shocked I had any doubts and was ready to go full steam ahead. I told him I wanted our daughter to have her own name and I didn't want her to carry the weight of the Summer who never got the chance to grow up and so was all her grandparents really wanted to talk about. He said he understood, but to think how loved our daughter would feel. And he knows I think Summer is a beautiful name, because I do, but the history. I told my parents I wanted my daughter to have her own name, and they cried. They didn't really comment. They then asked if I was ever going to change my mind, and I said no. But then my parents and husband were talking and wanted to try and change my mind. They brought a list of pros to me on why our daughter should be Summer, and I told them I disagreed with the list, 
They argued back and told me Summer deserves to be honored. I said my daughter deserves to live her life as well. My husband said we would still be able to and the name isn't that uncommon and that my sister would be the only person to think of. My parents told me to think of what my sister would want and how I love my sister and miss her every day. For some reason, that broke me. I did not want to name my daughter after a sister I never knew. I'm not totally sure what happened directly after I was so upset, but my husband and parents think I was cruel to say it like that. So, am I the asshole? I don't know the pain of losing a child, and I hope that I never have to experience that. But my sympathy ends when you start to neglect and emotionally abuse living over it. Story time about how my fiancé cheated on me with 10 other girls. So a little background information, I met this guy on Instagram, and we're gonna call him Bryce. Now, when him and I met, he was stationed in Korea. And he refused to ask me to be his girlfriend until he came home. So I waited an entire year for him to ask me to be his girlfriend. Which low-key should have been a red flag, but he made it seem romantic in some twisted weird way. So fast forward, he comes home in February. And he kept to his promise. The first day that we met, he asked me to be his girlfriend. So I say yes, fast forward. Him and I start having a ton of arguments because of things that he was doing while he was in Korea. Fast forward, we're officially together for nine months. So fast forward, of course he gets deployed to Europe in like September of 2022. So this man decides that he's gonna propose to me in July and then beg me to get married to him before he leaves. Now I may have ignored the first red flags, but I'm not dumb, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend cheated on me with 10 other girls. So like I said, this man begs me to get married to him before he leaves and thank goodness I didn't because divorce papers would have been served the same day. So fast forward, he starts acting super weird. He's going out 24 seven, he's getting drunk. He's not wearing the ring that he begged me to get him. Yes, he literally begged me for a ring so that way women would know that he had a girlfriend. Well, then of course I get a DM from a girl on Instagram asking if him and I were still together. And then after talking to her, I realized he literally made a Tinder two days after he got deployed. And what was his excuse? Oh, I wanted to meet friends to teach me German. And listen, I was not born last night, so I kept that conversation going because I wanted to get to the bottom of what the fuck was actually going on. And then, of course, he finally comes clean that he cheated on me with a bunch of girls. Oh, and you want to know the icing on the cake? One of them was a minor. Yep. After I leave him, he has the audacity to ask for my ring back, but I threatened to tell him. Am I the asshole for telling my sister she is an idiot if she thought her actions at her wedding wouldn't have consequences? Quick backstory. My bio dad died when I was young and my mom remarried when my sister was eight and I was 10. We are now in our late twenties. Stepdad focused a lot of his time providing for us so I never got close to him, but I am grateful for him. I am engaged and my sister is going to marry in about a month. My wedding will be in a year. Both of us are close to our mom. My sister, who I will call Noelle, fucked up in my opinion. At first, I was on her side, but now I just feel bad for my stepdad. Noelle isn't going to have him walk her down the aisle and give her away. I understood this is her decision, and when it came out, I helped my mom and stepdad understand that this was her choice. The turning point happened last week when she told us that he will not be sitting at the family table. When I asked her why, she made it clear that he wasn't family to her. Again, her right, but dang, he is the reason we had such a good childhood and are debt-free, as he paid for our college because he worked a ton. I knew this would result in them not going to the wedding and they informed my sister. She called me upset and was ranting about how it was her wedding, that she was being abandoned. I had enough and told her she's an idiot if she didn't think her actions wouldn't have consequences. She called me a jerk and hung up. I am unsure if I am a jerk and I do feel guilty since I am now closer to my parents since I promised he can walk me down the aisle at my wedding. So Reddit, am I the asshole? My husband, 28 male, is living with a female friend and she, 22 female, is hostile towards me, 23 female. My husband and I have been married for three years and our marriage is on the rocks. It all mainly started after the birth of our first child together, in which he became increasingly irritable, aggressive, and sexually distant from me. Once he started to get physically abusive by grabbing and pushing me, we decided to live at different residence in a desperate attempt to salvage our marriage. That was three months ago. I'm currently living with my mom and I work part-time while also taking care of our 18-month-old son. My husband purchased a new condo with the financial help of his dad and lives with a female friend of his, 22 female, who he apparently charges rent. I was uncomfortable about his living arrangement with this woman from the moment I found out about it, mainly because we agreed that we are not taking a break in the sense of seeing others and we are still married and not going through a separation, but just trying to give each other, mainly him, space. I find it very weird that he has a 22-year-old friend 
was comfortable enough to move in with him. Sussy. She has become very hostile towards me, which is strange because she's supposed to only be his friend and basically a tenant of his. For example, I went to visit him with our son and the whole time she was sitting near him and staring at me with hatred. When I asked if he and I could talk privately, she said, no, this is our place. And of course, this made everything awkward, so I just left shortly after that. I don't know why she would act so hostile towards me if she was just a friend and a tenant of his. My husband didn't seem bothered by her rudeness towards me either, and at one point I thought I saw him smirk. I don't know if I should be concerned that he and her have become more than friends, especially since my husband told me through text that him and I are still exclusive to each other. What is the best way to continue with this awkward situation? Well, I'm sorry to break this to you, but that man is sleeping with me. There is no doubt in my mind this man is sleeping with that woman. <laughs>